Yes, it's that time of year again. Here we are as autumn arrives. So do my logs. Now I am bringing them into the storeroom so they will stay dry during the winter months. Doing this causes me to lose all my energy. There are many ways of describing being tired by doing something. You can say that you are exhausted. You are tired out. You are shattered. You are bushed. You are knackered. Ooh, some people think that that's a naughty word. You are completely exhausted. And that's how I feel right now. How has your week been, by the way? Have you had an exhausting week? Has it been tiring for you? I hope not. Anyway, there's no need to worry because the weekend is now here. Yes, another live stream is about to start. Mr. Steve will be here. Also today, we'll be talking all about baby words and expressions. Words to do with baby and words connected to baby in general. Also, you are more than welcome to join in as well on the live chat. After all, it's a Sunday afternoon. It's just after two o'clock here in the UK. And this is Live English. Live from Much Wenlock in England on a Sunday afternoon, this is live English. It sure is, baby. Somewhere over the rainbow, Mr. Duncan arrives, flying high in the sky. It's another live stream for you. Here we go again. Yes, it is Sunday afternoon. Oh, look, there's a lovely rainbow in the sky saying hello paint the whole world with a rainbow mm. hi everybody this is mr duncan in england how are you today are you okay i hope so are you happy are you happy i really really hope so here we are again oh my goodness these weeks keep flying by i can't believe that next week we will be approaching the end of october can i just tell you that i'm doing something next week that i do every year at the end of october in fact come to think of it there are two things that I'll be doing next week. First of all, I will be celebrating my 12th year on YouTube and also I will be going up into the loft, into the attic to bring down the Christmas lights. Yes, we are approaching that time of year again, the run up to Christmas. When we say run up, we mean we are approaching it is the period of time where we approach something so during November and during the first two weeks of December we can say that that is the run-up the run-up to Christmas for those who are celebrating Christmas this year isn't it exciting? And for those who aren't, it doesn't matter. You can still wave and say, hello, Mr. Duncan. How are you today? I don't mind. Lots of people already on the live chat. Oh, my goodness. So many things to cover today. Now, first of all, I'm going to start off in a different way. I'm going to reveal today's mystery idiom because last week I forgot to do it and I got a lot of complaints 
i got a lot of angry people writing to me they were saying things like mr duncan we really like the mystery idiom why didn't you do it and things like that and then afterwards they would they would press the key on their keyboard and put lots and lots of exclamation marks after their very angry message so here we go here is today's mystery idiom i will start right now with that very thing so there it is just say what you see so that is today's mystery idiom so there is no need to complain i have remembered this week of course the big question now is will i remember to give you the answer before we finish so i'm hoping that before the end of today's live stream i will remember to give you the answer so there it is today's mystery idiom there is no excuse would you like to have a look outside <gasps> oh look at that there is the weather today's weather it's a little cloudy although earlier it was so nice it was lovely and sunny in fact i got so excited by today's weather i was going to go outside but having just looked at the weather forecast on the television they they are now saying that we might get some rain in this area so i've decided not to go outside but we will see what happens so there it is the view outside at the moment that is live out of my studio window so hopefully later we will get a chance hopefully to go outside but we will play that by ear we will play it by ear if you play something by ear it means you will judge the situation when it arrives so you're not sure you haven't decided you will play it by ear talking of expressions and idioms today we are talking about baby idioms and also words connected to having a baby and being a baby so there it is as you can see mr steve looking like a baby spitting his dummy out and now i can reveal exclusively what mr steve sounds like when he gets upset So today we are talking all about baby expressions, baby words, being a baby. Now I was going to show you a picture of me as a baby, but I actually can't find any. I thought I had a couple of photographs of me as a little baby, but I haven't. I haven't got any whatsoever. So that's not much good, is it? Oh, also something else to mention relating to next week. Yes, we are also approaching Halloween and already in my local town the town in which i live that is much wenlock you can see that the pumpkins are outside and halloween is also approaching i've just realized that the end of october is actually a very busy time of year for me because there are lots of things going on so there you can see some pumpkins have you ever eaten a pumpkin now I must be honest I have never in my life eaten pumpkin I've never tried it so I don't even know what it tastes like although the smell is a little off-putting I don't like the smell of pumpkins they smell a little a little ooh, pungent I think that's the word I'm looking for they smell very pungent so not only do we have my anniversary next week 12 years on youtube we also have the end of october we have halloween and also next week i will be preparing to get my christmas lights from up in the attic wow all i can say is i'm going to be very busy next week talking of being busy <laughs> 
yes the live chat is on for those who are interested let's have a look shall we oh there it is the live chat is now on your screen the big question is who was first on the live chat so let's go right back in time and have a look at who was first oh hello to Huang Huang congratulations you are first on the live chat and we know what that means you get a special round of applause well done Huang I have a feeling that you have a very quick finger I think so Julie G is also here as well thanks for joining me Julie Mohammed is here as well also Martha Olga Tomek Zena Chris and who else lots of other people joining us as well we have Belarusia hello Belarusia and congratulations to Belarusia for two reasons first of all it's Mother's Day in Argentina and also Belarusia is the first person to moderate on my live chat so Belarusia you now have the power to to make sure that my live chat stays well behaved if you see anyone doing anything they shouldn't you can ask them to leave okay then so Belarusia you now have the power of moderation oh my goodness isn't that amazing Attila is here also Pedro hello Pedro we never found out where you went last week in fact I've noticed that over the past few weeks you have been disappearing somewhere we are all very interested to find out what you have been getting up to Nawal is here I am a new subscriber to your channel and it is the first time that I'm watching you live sir I want to say hello to you hello Nawal and welcome I think I might give you a special round of applause there I think so so well done Nawal for being first on the live chat And when I say first I mean that it's your first time chatting here so nice also we have JC Geordie Jackie and Francisco Palmyra and also Gol hello Gol hello Mr Duncan hello people congratulations you are always the best good Sunday for all isn't that nice yes it is Sunday just coming up to 20 past two here in the UK I don't know what time it is where you are because I'm not there we will be taking a look at some of my very early lessons in a few moments we will be going right back in time to 2007 Wow how old were you in 2007 so that's 11 years ago so that's what we're doing later on do you mind if I send a picture to your email says Pedro well you can but I might not be able to show it today so if you do send a photograph today Pedro I might not be able to show it today because I'm here now in front of the camera doing the live stream but I will do my best Tias is here hello Tias Tias congratulating Belarusia for being the first ever moderator oh isn't that amazing so much responsibility my goodness so let's have a quick look at one of my old lessons so as I'm celebrating my 12th anniversary next week yes 12 years on YouTube I thought it would be a good idea to show you one of my very early lessons and in this video I will be talking all about accents and you might recognize something that's very very familiar hi everybody this is Mr Duncan in England how are you doing today are you okay I hope so many people ask me Mr Duncan what is the best way to speak English is it with an American accent or a British accent 
I think this is a very interesting question indeed. But my answer to this question is quite simple. You use the English that you feel the most comfortable with. You don't have to sound like an American when you're speaking. You don't have to sound like a British person when you're speaking. As long as you feel comfortable with the way you use English, that is the most important thing of all. Of course, it's also important that the other person understands what you're saying as well. So don't worry too much about sounding like somebody else. Don't try to copy somebody else's way of speaking. What you have to do is develop your own way of using English. Don't forget, English is an emotional language. It's a personal language. It's a language that you use to express the way you feel. So don't worry about sounding like somebody else. Use English as you would your own language, in your own way, to express the way you feel. So you don't have to sound like Mr. Duncan. You don't have to sound like some American. You don't have to sound like anybody. What you have to sound like is you. Did you see that so that was me 11 years ago with one of my first youtube videos after returning from china and did you see did you see what was on the screen yes this t-shirt i was actually wearing this exact t-shirt in the video so now you can see just how long i've had this t-shirt for many many years in fact over 11 years i've had this t-shirt so there it was we'll have a, another look at one of my early youtube videos later on because i think it's nice to have a little look back in time I, i'm always interested to see how i looked 10 years ago or 11 years ago it's always interesting so 11 years might not seem like a very long time to some people but to me it seems like an eternity because things were so different in my life 11 years ago and certainly 13 years ago if we want to go back that far things were very different because i was living in china working in china and i was about to start making my youtube videos so the 12th anniversary coming next week and another old lesson coming up later on as well mr steve will be here as well don't forget mr steve is on his way <laughs> Mm, there he is and here is today's mystery idiom for those who missed it earlier there it is today's mystery idiom but what is it what is it find out later on and hopefully <laughs> you you might have got the right answer who knows i don't i don't know i'm not psychic for goodness sake so steve will be here and well what can I say? What can I say? Except it's been an amazing 12 years here on YouTube. I've really enjoyed myself. I still can't believe it. Coming up also today, we have a lovely message. Oh, from one of my viewers watching out there. Hossam. Hossam watching in Egypt. If you are watching right now, I will play your message in a roundabout five or six minutes time steve is on the way but let's have a look at the place in which i live because a lot of people ask mr duncan mr duncan please can you show us around the place in which you live and my reply to that is okay then
Many people ask me, Mr. Duncan, where do you live? Well, I thought today it'd be a good chance for you to have a look in the place I live because it's such a beautiful day today. So here it is. Here is the place in which I live. It's Much Wenlock in Shropshire, one of the most beautiful places in England. And if you haven't been here, my question is, why not? Can you see what's over there? That is the local undertaker. They are the people responsible for arranging funerals. They help to dispose of dead people. It's a rather sobering thought that one day those people will be putting me in the ground. If there's one thing I really love about a day like this, it's the gentle, calming breeze. Just a very gentle breeze blowing in the air, helping to keep me nice and cool. The word breeze can be used in many ways. Of course, it is the gentle wind, cooling and refreshing as it blows by. A very gentle, breeze just like today really there is a lovely summer breeze in the air keeping me nice and cool also breeze can mean to do something very easily i passed my exam yesterday it was easy in fact it was a breeze something that is very easy to do something that you found easy to do can be described as a breeze to move gently, maybe into a room or out of a room or in front of a group of people. To suddenly appear can be described as breeze. He breezed into the room with complete confidence. Now there is a very interesting place, a gate to a secret garden, a place that is unknown and never seen by anyone. Just like the story. Have you ever read that story? It's called The Secret Garden. It's a brilliant story, full of adventure, excitement, mystery, and of course, a little bit of fantasy as well. We all like a little bit of fantasy in our lives from time to time. Do you recognise this place? This is where I did my famous puddle dance. But as you can see, the puddle has now gone. The water has disappeared. It's so hot at the moment, the puddle has completely evaporated. It might sound like a strange thing to say, but due to making these English lessons for you, my life changed completely. And here is what happened. Way back in 2012, I made a special lesson right here in Much Wenlock, talking all about the origins of the modern Olympic Games. And I fell in love with this place. I loved it so much, I ended up moving here. And so did Mr. Steve. The field behind me is where every year the Wenlock Games are held. And this very place was the inspiration for the modern Olympic Games that we all know now.
Here's an interesting phrase that you might hear used quite often in English. The phrase is cross the line. If you cross the line, it means you have gone too far. You have done something that has upset many people or one person. You have crossed the line. Up until a certain point, what you were saying or doing was okay. But you had to go too far. You had to cross the line. You went from being okay to offensive. You went from being acceptable to unacceptable. You crossed the line. I must be honest, it is absolutely baking hot today. I can't believe I've been outside for the past four hours filming in this heat, this intense heat. I think it's fair to say that we will all remember the summer of 2018. And can you see behind me? Look, everywhere is scorched. The sun has dried all the grass, all of the trees, all of the bushes. Everything looks parched and tinder dry. And that is one of the reasons why there are many wildfires breaking out at the moment, including here in the UK and more recently in Greece. If you remember earlier in the year, I showed you this field. I showed you all of the yellow flowers that were blooming in this field. This is rapeseed. So everything you see behind me is rapeseed. And now as the seeds come out, you can see now that we have small seed pods and inside these are the rape seeds and these will be gathered very soon and then they will be compressed and all of the oil will be extracted and that is rapeseed oil but as you can see once again the theme is very similar this whole field is now very dry very arid and Perhaps, I'm not 100% certain, but perhaps this whole crop has been ruined by the hot weather. Although, if I just have a look inside this pod, yes, you can see all of the rape seeds. Can you see them? There they are. Very tiny black seeds. And that is where the rape seed oil will come from. Can you see what I've got here? A lovely ice cream. The only problem is, it's so hot today, the ice cream is already beginning to melt. However, it is very much appreciated. There is nothing worse than being hot and sticky on a day like this. Right now, I'm in the square here in Much Wenlock, in the center of the town, a very small, cosy area. In the afternoon lots of people like to come and sit down, especially today because the sun is out and some people have decided to come into town to enjoy the sunshine and of course sample the local ice cream. All I can say is that the temperature today isn't as hot as it was in that video.
thank you very much for deciding to spend your sunday with us live on youtube it's mr duncan that's me and now joining me in the studio it is the guy that sometimes cries like this Oh, for goodness sake, Steve, calm down. I don't cry like that, Mr. Duncan. I don't know why you're suggesting that. Just because I got a bit upset over selling my car a few weeks ago. That's exactly... You're suggesting I'm a crybaby. That's exactly how Steve sounded last week. He was crying his eyes out. I but, wasn't. But I think you're over it now. Hello, everybody. Let's move on from that. And I notice you've got a, a, a picture, a photograph of me... Uh, as though you're my parent carrying me in in uh, a papoose. Yes, we'll talk about that later. In but, front. But that, yes, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Let's not let's not jump the gun. So there <laughs> it is. Yes. So there's Steve uh, being carried around like a little baby, and there he is having one of his little crying moments. We will talk about words to do with baby words and expressions. There are lots actually. I I can't believe how many there are. In fact. And also words connected to babies in general. So that's something we will be doing a little bit later on. But first of all, Steve. Yes. First of all, we received something very nice during the week. We did indeed. Mm. We did indeed. And it's nice to uh, receive messages and uh, videos and uh, all sorts of things from people who appreciate what well what you mainly do i just help you out on a sunday so i'm the main guy and steve is the sidekick thanks for that <laughs> no need to actually emphasize that even more <laughs> but, but you are a very important part of this oh yes you are. i am the linchpin <laughs> whatever no, that. i'm not saying that <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, then. The linchpin. The anyway. We, that a linchpin means an important component that holds everything together. So, so an an important part, something that locks everything together. Even linchpin. if it's a very small thing, it is very important. So, so Mr. Steve is a small part of the show, but he is also very important. But we have a super duper message, a message from Hossam who during the week sent this lovely message. Hello, Mr. Duncan, and hello, Mr. Steve. My name is Hussam from Alexandria, Egypt. Uh, I am following your lessons since uh, one year ago, and in fact, I found them very helpful to me. Because I was studying English hard, but I was missing the practicing. And in fact, your videos gave to me what I was looking for. Unfortunately, I'm not engaging during the live stream, but I used to download and study the videos afterwards. I have noticed that my listening and speaking skills dramatically enhanced, and for that I would like to show my appreciation to you and to Mr. Steve as well. Thanks again, and I wish you the best in your life, and that offer now. Isn't that nice? Thank you very much to Hassam watching and listening in Egypt. And if you would like to send an email with a voice recording, you don't have to be on video because I do realize that lots of people are shy, like Mr. Steve. Mr. Steve is a very shy person. So if you want to send something in, you are more than welcome to send it to my email address. And also for those who are wondering, you can also find me live here on YouTube every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time. So write it down, write it down somewhere important. Maybe you can post it on the top of your computer monitor or maybe write it on the back of your hands so you don't forget. Here's a good idea. Maybe you could get a tattoo. What do you, what do you think, Steve? You could have a tattoo on your arm and it has all of my details on it. So you could tattoo everything on there. You could tattoo 
the actual time of my live stream you could also put my email address and maybe also some other information as well what do you th that's a good it's idea a bit extreme a lot of people Mr. Duncan a bit extreme but a lot of people are having tattoos they are it's all the rage here in the UK on their body footballers uh, especially yeah well it started with uh, footballers uh, and uh, other uh, people famous people associated with sports and because I think it was David Beckham started it all off, didn't he? Famous really? footballer. So there we Got go. A few tattoos, and now uh, people are just plastering themselves. Plastering means putting a lot all over themselves with tattoos. And, yes. Uh, I suppose some people think it's, think it's sexy. Uh, but, um, you know, when they get older, it's going to look a bit of a mess. Well, the thing is, I'm quite old fashioned. So I remember growing up in the 70s. And if you mm. had a tattoo on your arm, it, it would often mean that you were not a very nice person. You, may, you might be a criminal or a bad person to be avoided. Uh, although, having said that, a lot of people also who were in the army or fought in maybe one of the wars, they, they often had tattoos as well. So it doesn't always have a negative meaning. It's like a badge of honour. You know, I've gone through that pain. Mm. It, it makes you, gives you a different uh, persona. Um, because I think it's quite painful to have one done. I think if you if you go and have that done, then uh, it's sort of like a badge of honour. Oh, yeah, well done. I, You've toughed it out. I could not. I uh, could never, ever have a tattoo on my body. And some people have them on their face. Well, some people have tattoos of like their lovers' names, and then if you split up with them, it's there forever. That's it. That's you can have the... it lasered off, but I think that's probably just as painful. I tell you what they do now: they don't actually remove the tattoo. So if you have a a, a a tattoo on your arm or on your body that you don't like, they can actually do things now to to hide it. So they put another tattoo, and, and they work the one that you don't want into it it's very strange i don't know how they do it but there, there are tv shows now that show people having their tattoos replaced with another one <laughs> well yes you see we, we we've got to be careful what we say with otherwise we'll sound a bit old-fashioned but i wonder if it's just in this country or whether it's universal whether people in other countries maybe you'd like to let us know well i know for a fact tattoos becoming popular in Wherever you're watching, please I know in, tell us. I know in China, definitely in China, that tattoos are not popular. So if you have a tattoo in China, it often means that you are in a gang or you are a criminal. So quite often in, in China especially, and I know that from my own experience, although maybe things have changed over the, the, past, the past 10 or 12 years. So, yeah. But anyway, I digress. Let's get back on to topic. You've had a lot of comments. I was reading some of the comments before you came on. In yeah. Fact, uh, there was an interesting one from uh, Irene. Oh, She's okay. still watching. OK. It must have related to uh, last week's topic about how much do you weigh and things like that, because just randomly... Irene just says that she's telling Pedro that uh, she's 165 centimetres and 42 kilograms. So that must have been, Pedro must have asked last week uh, to Irene, what, how tall are you, what do you weigh? And she's answered it this week. This so is, we've got this, this continuation from one live stream to another. I'm not sure what this is becoming. It We seem to be turning... <laughs> is it we, a dating agency? We seem to be turning into a dating channel. Maybe this is... <laughs> Maybe this is what we should do over time. Maybe we, we can change this from an English lesson to, to a dating site. So maybe we could we could show photographs of people and maybe we, we could match one person to another. Yes. So, yes. We'll charge a fee, of course, naturally. Of, co of course, we will charge a fee and an administration fee, of course. You must have been talking about uh, what we tend to eat in autumn because people were saying that they like pumpkin pie. Yes. And uh, Franco, Franco Ferrari from Italy. Now, if ever there was an Italian name, there is one. Uh, says that uh, they do very nice pumpkin ravioli i've i've never uh, tried it i've never pumpkin eaten ravioli in italy so ravioli made made with pumpkin well i don't know whether it's how that is whether there's pumpkin within the ravioli or, 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 or i don't know how that is but pumpkin ravioli sounds very nice 
I've never and, ever tried uh, it I've never tried pumpkin I've never eaten it in my life I'm sure I have yeah uh, pumpkin soup I've had that you oh, have I, that I'm sure you've had pumpkin soup oh I you probably you might have done I don't remember it's sort of orangey yellow yeah uh, it, it yes lovely pumpkin soup is nice I've had butternut squash yes that's similar I think that's I think it it's similar so butternut squash I've had that but I've never eaten pumpkin I don't really like the smell either they smell very pungent almost ugh, not not very not very nice at all shall we have a look at the live chat because go on you were mentioning it just so I like the live chat as you know you get very excited Amit in 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 by the way um mm -hmm. who was it who sent the 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 voice message that was Hassam. Hassam. What very good English. I've got to say what very good English Hassam has. Yes. Uh, very clear. And apparently it's all thanks to my lessons. I'm sure it's not entirely thanks to your lessons. But no. <laughs> did, did you hear the message? <laughs> I'm only joking. Yes. So ah. let, let's oh, wait, wait. Somebody said something about tattoos. Wait there a second. I'm, I'm just down. going back a bit further. Hold okay. on, Steve. We've got plenty of time. <laughs> Do you have a tattoo? I don't, and nor does Steve, and I would never have one, ever. Definitely not. Do you have a tattoo? It says, part of American culture, they like, bloody like it. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro says, uh, a message for Julie G, how to send a, an audio re recording to Mr. Duncan. You just record something in the form of a, an MP4 file so either mp4 or mp3 sujin makes an interesting comment uh, i'm still afraid of people with tattoos well that's what it used to be like here if you saw somebody <laughs> with a tattoo when we were growing up you, you wouldn't you would stay away from them because you'd think they'd either hurt you or, or beat you up or do something because that's what tattoos were associated with people with a bad reputation so this is going um, about going back about 40 years so yes. we would we would we would just assume that they weren't very nice people but of course nowadays tattoos are very popular i read that one british lady who is 77 years old had 16 <laughs> tattoos 16 after her husband died after her husband died because he wouldn't allow her to have them. So she was getting sort of revenge <laughs> on revenge on her dead husband. How interesting. <laughs> it is amazing here. Oh, thank you very much for that. I think you're watching in Korea, if I'm not mistaken. That looks like Korean, the the name there. Hello, Sue Cat. Shirley. Hello, Shirley. Watching in Germany. Hello, Shirley. I hope I pronounced your name right there. Caridas. In the Pol Polynesian island, the tattoo has an old tradition. Ah, well, that's quite interesting, isn't it, Steve? Yes. Because they are actually, uh, um, th they are emblems that were worn by people over, I want to say, thousands of years. So I, th I don't think tattoos are really a new thing. I think they go back quite a long way. If you see, I want to say the Mayan culture. Mayans. Yes. I think they have tattoos or markings on their bodies i think it's certainly uh, certainly been around for a long time and and uh hindu culture uh, there's a lot of uh tattooing with with henna under the skin uh or, or skin art uh because i've been to uh, i've been to somewhere where uh, this Indian lady was was doing I think well, body art they call it don't they yes and there's a certain culture in I think it Hinduism but that, that where, that's where they uh, but that's just paint um, skin. that's yes that's just um, temporary yes I know I but, want, I want know, to, what is it called I think it's called is it called henna well yes henna is a dye yes which I think is is often used but it's I, I've had my hand sort of Yes, uh, had, done by a Hindu woman. It was beautiful. It's, Very no, nice. it's normally off. done. It's normally done before a wedding ceremony. That's right. Wedding exactly. ceremony. Yes. So in Asian culture, you will find that uh, I think it's called henna dye. Yes. So if anyone watching who knows about that, <laughs> you might know more than we do. Are you going to weigh yourself today, Mr. Duncan? Yes. Ah, yes. Because lots of people. I mean, no, we're uh, not. Uh, Maria has asked. Irene has asked. Why did you say and, yes? Uh, and now. <laughs> And now uh, Albert has also asked, are you going to weigh yourself? No, we're not. 
Why not? Well, because it's not... Because you don't think you've lost any weight, Mr. Duncan? No. Mr. Duncan whoa. has been buying... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just, Mr. Just, Duncan I'm has I'm trying to not... explain something. <laughs> but I'm going to tell it how it really is. But I'm not I'm not going to say anything. What I'm <laughs> about to say is I'm going to do the, the weighing every couple of weeks. Because I think oh, every... Oh, yes. <laughs> every week... Every week would be a little bit boring, I think. So next week i'm going to weigh myself but not mm. this week so we started last week i've been very good i haven't eaten a lot i had a little bit of ice cream last night i must admit but yes i, I think i've lost a bit of weight i'm much more active i've done some exercise i was bringing in the wood you were look at this i've got wood everyone can you see my wood <laughs> not live i hope mr duncan does anyone I love the smell of wood oh okay oh i just love the i love the smell when we're getting it in it i'm a i'm a i'm a secret wood sniffer yes steve is very much <laughs> steve is very much into wood yes yeah, all right mr duncan we, 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 we get it no you don't <laughs> what what do you get well, it just smells lovely and sort of yes but what do you get <laughs> i don't know what you mean doesn't matter mr. i'm just, duncan. I'm you just know exactly what you're doing i'm just saying i've got wood and steve has got wood because we've we've got We're wood. so excited to be live but we we need wood <laughs> and if we don't have our wood we we will be very very unhappy in a minute i'm going to bang you on the head with this wood if you don't uh, stop being suggestive mr duncan i don't know what you mean i have no <laughs> idea what steve's on about what, what what do you mean suggestive you know exactly what you're saying look, mr duncan i've just got my wood in my hand what's wrong with that look i've got a piece of wood here what i don't know what's wrong with him today I, I don't know what's been going on. Sue Cat says she doesn't like the combination of needles and electricity, which I think is, sums it up really. Yes, it doesn't sound uh, like it doesn't sound like a good combination. No, not really. It's, it's that noise it makes. And anyway, who's who's got hours to sit there while somebody paints a, you know, does a, some art all over your body? I mean, I know they're quite skilled. It's an artistic. The people of the tattooists uh, are quite artistic. Um, it's a form of art, definitely. You know they don't um, they don't call it tattoo anymore. What do they call it? They call it ink, ink, ink. So you don't you don't have okay. a tattoo anymore. It's like an old fashioned word. So now they they just call it ink. So they say, oh, I like your ink, nice ink. Oh, I didn't know that ink. So yes, it's not it's not tattoo. Tattoo is like the thing that Popeye had on his uh, the anchor. Yeah, the, the big anchor. <laughs> I think I think a lot of people have it done because it they think it makes them uh, probably does more sexually attractive. I think I think a man or a woman with a tattoo, I think it's a bit of a turn on. That's why people have tattoos, uh, I think, you know, because particularly if you put it in certain places over your body, you know, might might make you more sort of attractive i wonder what the strangest sexual way i wonder what the strangest part <laughs> i wonder what the strangest part of the body is that you could have a tattoo so do you have a tattoo out there maybe someone does and do yes. you have it have it on a strange part of your body send us pictures i know my my younger sister she's very much into tattoos and she's got them on her legs and on her shoulders so she's got them all over the place no irene i'm not losing any weight it's only mr duncan apparently my uh, got to lose some. rung sack rung sack thank you very much rung sack is actually admiring my wood he says your wood is very nice thank you very much mm -hmm. i think my wood is better than steve's steve's is a little small but i've got i've got big wood here definitely well what's wrong Nothing. I'm just wondering how long you're going to keep up this filth. I Mr. don't know. Duncan. <laughs> what do you mean filth? I don't want to be any part of this, this debauchery. I'm feeling very happy today, Steve. Do you know why? Because my favourite TV presenter came yes. back, came back on air this week. Peter yeah. Simon, Peter Simon, who who said something a few weeks ago that got him taken off the air. He, he was took off the air. But he was back this week, so I'm really, really happy. And there, there you can see him already wearing his Christmas sweater, because they're talking about Christmas on the channel that oh. he, wor he works for. Yeah, somebody was. A few people were talking about Christmas and how early we 
start talking about it. Uh, every year we moan about this, Mr Duncan, that uh, as soon as September arrives, you start seeing all the hints in the shops to go and buy Christmas presents and cars because the shops want to get in. Want, you want your money quickly. Yes. And uh, anyway, but let's not go into that. Well, you're going to start moaning. I'm, I, what I'm actually talking about is Peter Simon. Yes. Is, is back. You will forgive him. So I'm very, very happy to see him back. In fact, my, my cockles were so warm. I, I can't remember last time. The last time my cockles were so warm. So it's nice Ooh. to see Peter Simon back on ideal world Yay! yes a bit of, a bit of a bit of brightness on the television he does he cheers a real me up. person he really and, cheers uh, me up he does he does actually i mean we never buy anything we just watch him for entertainment that's that's the <laughs> actually we we said that because he's, he's on a shopping channel isn't he presenter on a shopping channel he is and uh, we actually um were musing about uh, whether since he's left the channel they might have Far less people watching, but uh, the sales probably won't have been affected because I think a lot of people watch Peter Simon for entertainment. Certainly we do. But we never buy anything. We just watch him for entertainment. We've yes. got to buy something. We've got to buy something. That's it. Uh, one yes. day. Anyway, that's it. That's that's. that's we weren't going to talk about. We weren't going to talk about tattooing, were we today? No. No. It's just it's how this can evolve this whole program this live show can evolve so, into anything I, i'm noticing something here what? today steve put your hand up what's what's this what's this on your hand that. there's there's something there on your hand is is that a telephone number uh yes i met somebody last night mr duncan and uh well we just you know clicked look just like that look everyone steve has something the sparks flew steve has something written on his hand it looks like a telephone number now should i tell you what that is okay it's rubbing off now <laughs> really <Because> it's um <laughs> you're not rubbing off on my wood are you oh that'd be disgusting mr duncan why is that disgusting um so last night i was in a concert in the choir you know we have these concerts every now and then you sing with old people basically and uh, let's face it yes there are a lot of well i'm not you know uh, there's a range now we've got we've the youngest in the choir now is about 26 i thought you were starting to sing then the oldest is probably i would say 80 but yes um we've got a range i would most are you know towards the you know the the autumn of their lives i would say I like the way I got that in, Mr. Duncan. The autumn. Yes, they're sort of over 60, 65 and over. But uh, we've got a, a smattering. A, a what? smattering of different age groups <laughs> within the choir. You are using some strange words today. You said muse. 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 I'm musing. Muse. Do, do people still say muse? I, <laughs> they can do. What is this? Edwardian. Muse. Is this the Edwardian period? Sort of thinking things over. No one says muse. Talking, thinking over in your mind. Yes, I Just, know. I've got it. Well, I'm explaining it. it to the viewers. <laughs> yes muse <laughs> but no one uses that word anymore it's about it's about 150 years old that word well i'm nearly 150 mr duncan what's the other word you just used i can't remember smattering smattering a smattering of something that means a little bit a little bit of something a, a smattering, smattering yes a little sprinkle a little sprinkle so so maybe if you put salt or pepper on your food you might just have a little smattering Yes, so a little bit. I'm just saying that there are some younger people within the choir, a smattering, just a, a small, odd, a few people who are younger. Oh, they're definitely odd. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, back to this. Back to this. Back to back to the phone number. So I was I was singing a solo. Okay, so I haven't got any music. I've got no words in front of me. Was it a hand solo? No, it oh. wasn't. And. Uh, Sometimes I worry that I will forget some of the words or oh, some of the lines. OK. Particularly the start of a, of, of a new verse, if you're doing a solo. You know, you're standing there in front of everybody. And so what I do for self-confidence, I've never ever used it, is I just write a couple of phrases that maybe I've had problems remembering when I've been practising. Usually the start of a new verse. So if I got into problems, I could just sort of go like that but of course I, i've never actually used it it's what? just there it gives me a bit of bolsters me gives it me a bit of confidence bolster bolster <laughs> what's 
<laughs> welcome, Duncan. welcome to another edition of words that we never use anymore. We use the word bolster. It means to to, to give you some uh, encouragement, to bolster, to confidence. Bolster. Yeah. Uh, yes. I mean, you might say, you might. I might say to you, Mr. Duncan, before you come on, start the live show. You might be doubt having doubts about the show and you don't want to do it and should i do it anymore and will I, anyone be watching and i say oh mr duncan people love you they, they 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 really appreciate what you do and you'll have a great show today that's i'm bolstering you i'm i'm supporting you it's not working so bolster yes <laughs> we're using new words would you like how do you be how 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 would we spell bolster b-o-l-s-t-e-r b-o-l-s-t -E E sure, oh. somebody's in front of a computer and they can look it up I and bet, realize that that is a real word. I bet Tomek is looking. To Tomek is always typing things into Google, I think so. It's three o'clock, everyone. And for those. Ready? For those who've just joined us, it is live English. We are now exactly, absolutely, completely 100% live every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK well, time. I'm probably only about 50% live. Yes. Because next, <laughs> oh, talking of live next week, because it's Halloween, we are in the period of Halloween. Also, we have the 12th anniversary of my YouTube channel. We will be talking all about death. What? Next week. Death. The, the theme is death well, next week. That's going to put people off. We're not going to get anybody watching now. But it's Halloween. Yes. Halloween next week. Do you remember last year you, you dressed as a... As, uh, I think it was a vampire and I, I dressed as Frankenstein's monster. So it can't be any more scary than last year. It'll be a light hearted look at death. Yes. Light hearted. If you want to have a have a real laugh about death, tune in next Sunday, even though today we have another hour to go to talk about birth. Yes. How strange we are talking about the other end of the spectrum today. We are talking all about baby words and expressions and there is mr steve looking like a big baby ah well that's a good place to start mr duncan can you hear him that's what mr steve sounds like when he's in a mood when he's crying over something somebody asked me i can't remember who it was now about uh, do i like my new car oh i can't remember who asked it now but i saw that flash up when you were displaying the live stream okay uh, the, 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 the comments uh, I can't remember who it was thank you for that yes I like it but I miss my old car oh. and uh, <coughs> no I'm not gonna get upset again no it's over it's gone you've got to move on I realize actually that if I really had kept that car for 30 years uh, I don't think that's a very healthy thing to do no I think you've got to move on you've got to you, so you've got to realize <clears throat> you've got to realize sometimes when you when you need to move on in life and go to a new stage you can't keep hanging on to the past all the time uh, but there you go so yes you do, do you want to show that picture again of me uh, as a baby as a baby which you you asked me to, to last this week didn't you mr duncan to make some baby faces yes so that you could uh, okay display we, me in that no, way. no one wants to know about the process Let's just talk okay. about the subject. Here is the subject, everyone. And today's subject is baby words and expressions. And I believe you have some expressions for us right now. Well, I there's, believe there's the first one, because that um, what you just uh, what I'm in there in front of you uh, is, 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 is a modern way for some people to transport their babies around called a papoose which can be spelt with one p or two p's apparently that's an interesting uh, interesting word papoose yes well the origin of the word is from native american indians uh and it actually refers to a native american indian baby oh okay it was called a papoose. So not 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 the thing you carry the baby in, but the baby itself. The baby itself was called a papoose. Oh. Uh, and then the phrase was adopted by uh, adopted in modern times for, as as you say, the, the thing, the sling uh, that is because they used to carry babies in. 
uh, which um, American Indians used to carry, probably not just American Indians, but probably cultures for thousands of years, probably carried their babies but on their backs uh, in a sling. And uh, I, if we haven't got a picture of that, uh, but, 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 you know, <laughs> babies being carried on the backs of their mother. Clearly, we don't have a picture of that. In a sling, usually made from uh, animal skin, was very common because, of course, you couldn't just sit around all day doing nothing once you had a baby. You had to survive. So you needed to have your hands free uh, to be able to work in the fields or do whatever you were doing. Uh -huh. uh, and so that was just a practical way of of having your baby with you because you mm. couldn't leave that. There, was, there weren't baby minders, you know, a thousand years ago. Uh, so it was just a very practical way of keeping your hands free to be able to carry on working in the fields, planting crops, making things, but have your baby with you all the time. That's it. So now I know why the papoose show us the word again there we go i know why the papoose is popular now because all of the parents are on their mobile phones oh, all right they're yes. on their phones all the time yes. so so they can't look after the baby they can't push the baby in a, in a pram or push chair so and they can't carry it in their arms because they can't use their mobile phones so yes, that could be the reason i, th I think i've just solved that that puzzle so that's the reason why the papoose is very popular now well so they can walk with their baby do, 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 and an, they, they can text as well mr duncan's being a bit silly uh, uh I mean, although they could have some basis in you know if you can carry on working in the field you can you can uh, you can uh, go on social media but no apparently i think there there's a certain group there's always a group of people aren't there that want to sort of return to sort of uh, times long ago when they thought things were like people into paleo foods. So I think seeing a picture of a baby, oh, baby on somebody, oh, I want to do that. What? I'm closer to the baby. <laughs> and there's some studies, apparently, there's some so-called experts who think that if the baby is close to you all the time, mm. it's going to feel more loved and all this kind of crap, you know. Uh, I mean, if a baby's loved, if the baby knows it's loved, you don't have to carry it around with you all the time, surely. Um, but, uh, you know, not that we've got children, so we've got to be careful what we say here, Mr. Duncan. But it's very... Co but having the baby in front of you, uh, because that's not traditional, because there's a very good reason why, you know, you don't carry babies in front of you. It's the same reason, you know, you, you, you have a, an air bath. It's very dangerous for the baby. It's quite controversial, <laughs> this papoose. <laughs> What? I have absolutely no idea. Yeah, what the, the, the papoose wearing the, having the baby what? in front okay. is quite controversial because obviously if you fall over, <laughs> then the baby is going to get injured. But I suppose it depends how fat your baby is. <laughs> oh. Yes. <laughs> so it's a bit controversial. Why? Why the baby has moved from the back to the front? Probably presumably because the parent wants to keep an eye on the baby oh. but it's a bit dangerous because my, my baby's too heavy my baby's too heavy i'm going ah. it's controversial obviously it's up to you if you want to carry your baby like in that way uh seems to me it would be a bit it's like having a big rucksack it'd be a bit heavy but you do have a choice back. you it's have a choice ch it's a choice no you have a choice you can have the mm. baby on the front or sometimes on the back so not mm. everyone, but but then you could fall backwards and squash your baby. Yeah, but you're more likely to fall <laughs> forwards. Most people to fall forwards. So it's more dangerous in the front. So, but I think this mm. week people have been talking about... Show the word again. There we go. Yes. Papoose. So they've been talking about the papoose because now men are wearing the papoose. They are wearing it. So that's that's the reason why people have been talking about it this week, because men are now walking around with their babies attached to their bodies at the front or at the back. So that's the reason why I wanted to mention that. And I think it's a, an interesting word as well. Papoose. Yes. So, so that's actually the old Indian word. Native For a baby. Native Americans. You don't say Indians. If you want to really you just get it, did if you I know I did and you did as well did I I think you said Indians I think we can say Indian so so Native Americans 
Whew, you have to be so careful. I mean, you know, you know what will happen. We'll get complaints and then we have to take ourselves off the air. In fact, are we still on air? I don't we've know. been cut off already. Maybe YouTube have, have already cut the connection. No. Uh, um, but yes, yes, as you say, you, you do. I haven't seen a man with one. I think he'd be ridiculed by his friends. We, we were in the tea room in Much Wenlock. Do you remember the, ah. the couple that came in and, and the husband had had the baby strapped? To the front oh, of his body very dangerous because that tea room we go to is very small has got low ceilings and lots of steps dangerous steps going down so he could have easily we've seen people trip in there and fall over he could have tripped have fallen we? over and squashed the baby i don't remember anybody falling. what an irresponsible parent yes so so actually it might be more dangerous well, having, it is apparently it might be more dangerous having your baby attached to your body they can't you can't get rid of them quickly so if you fall over you will fall on your baby so it, it doesn't seem like a very safe thing having said that if you are pushing them maybe perhaps your your push chair or your pram might roll away ah but they've probably got uh, sort of anti-lock anti -lock <laughs> brakes on them actually i saw a pram the other day <sighs> and can you believe this yes well, actually, I do believe it. Whatever you're about to say, I believe it. A, a woman was pushing a pram and uh, I just happened to be following. And uh, the pram had got airbags. Yeah. Airbags on the pram. I'm not I'm not surprised. Uh, nothing surprises like me. Like a car has got airbags. Nothing surprises me anymore. I mean, how fast is that? <laughs> was the mother intending to push the pram? That, that an impact would require the release of airbags to protect the baby. And if they did go off, it might damage the baby. Sounds a bit extreme to me, but that's obviously a marketing ploy from a company wishing to sell prams, saying, oh, look, we've got airbags on here. So that if, you know, if you push your pram at 60 miles an hour and crash into another pram, maybe it's, maybe it's, um, uh, maybe if you're walking up the street... Uh, and and you have a collision with another mother coming the other way with a pram. <laughs> another mother. The two prams collide. <laughs> what are, are you oh, using? Yes, a parent. A parent. Oh, then. I see. You're not using street talk. So you've got one parent coming one way on the street, another coming the other way, and for some reason the prams collide uh, at three miles an hour impact. Well, probably six miles an hour, and those airbags have got to go off to protect the baby. That's what those airbags are for. Those six mile an hour impacts. So that could destroy a baby's life. Yes, but you, I mean, you can drop a baby from see, a building and they survive. See, They're very robust. <laughs> no, no, I'm not suggesting you do that. Can I just... Babies are very robust creatures. Just before you can drop we get... down the stairs, that's yes. fine. <laughs> just, just not be... that I'm suggesting. Please. You know, don't please, try it at home. Please, please ignore everything. <laughs> I don't know what's happened to Steve. I think he might have had a brain. Excited. I think he's had a brain aneurysm or something. Yes. I'm sure, I'm being a bit controversial. But I... no, but uh, no, seriously, babies are actually quite robust. Yes. You can, you can, uh, you know, not suggesting you do, but no, if a baby please, has a fall. Please don't try this. Don't try to drop your. They tend to be quite yes, resilient. Yes, okay. Okay, we've got it. We've All got right. it. I'm trying to explain. I'm just, I'm just doing a big disclaimer. This is a disclaimer. Please don't drop your baby. I said that. Oh. As an experiment, don't don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't do a Michael Jackson because when Michael Jackson did it, everyone got really upset. So please don't hold your baby out of a window and drop it to see if it really does survive. So so please don't do that. So don't listen to Steve. Somet I didn't say do it. Sometimes he say. sometimes he gets these pains in the head. What is what is this 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 then? What is this? I've explained on, it already. You don't I, listen to a word I say, Steve, do you? Yes, I did. You said I this, said it, it was a it's, it's a prompt. Yes, but it's but a prompt. But what if you can't remember the whole song? Well, you never do you forget have, the whole song. Do you have to write the whole song? On, I your, never, on your arm it's there for comfort support so, so the whole song is on your arm but i get halfway through the song and i go back and have to start the second verse and i can't remember what the first line is i know that that's there should i need yes it. we've got now, that. i always do it but i've never ever had to use it yes we know you've said well, all this well, you just asked me but i'm just extending the joke it's a joke you see i'm saying that just two lines 
on your on your hand but what if it's the whole song so maybe it goes all the way down your body so if it's a very long song you might have to write everything on your on your body you might have to lift your shirt up to have a look a bit like writing your lines on, on the scenery when you're on stage really i've seen people do that they walk over to a piece of scenery and they've got their lines written there <laughs> well they're, they're reading from the from the from the wall yes They've got little little post-it notes. That's on the terrible. Scenery. What a terrible, terrible thing to do. Do you well, like? You ought to try it. It's not easy remembering your lines. Do you like the picture of my pram? Look at that. So there is a word that we're going to use now. Pram. Let's or, see what people are saying on the live stream. But have we really touched well, a controversial subject here? I, I don't think so. Well, pram. Let's have a look. Wait there. I'm just doing a show here. <laughs> pram. <laughs> can you can you see the word? So a pram is something that you put a baby in normally to lie down so there is a difference so that is a pram but do you know what pram is short for yes perambulator told you i knew but you didn't tell me well i knew it was that i said did you know and you said yes Maybe you didn't ask me to say you but just you... said do you know and i said yes <laughs> <laughs> perambulator <laughs> so the word pram is actually a short version of the word perambulate well, nobody uses that word now you're well, being very old-fashioned mr Duncan. you're using an old-fashioned word there well you were, the, the, you but were they complaining use... to me of using old-fashioned words but we still use the word pram i know but we don't use perambulator i didn't say we did i said where this comes from which is different thing altogether also there is also push chair push chair yes push chair and buggy so they can be very similar things. I'm sure Tomek will tell me I'm wrong. A buggy is like a small pram, yes. isn't it? So a buggy can be a small pram, it's but got sometimes little wheels, little wheels. But, they... but nowadays, push chair and buggy, push chair and buggy are the same thing. You're right. Yes, they can be very similar. Whereas a pram is that traditional. That's a you. You've drawn a tra traditional looking uh, mode of transport for a baby. <laughs> <laughs> a, a mode of a mode, a mode of, of a mode of transport for a baby yes a pram well it's got big wheels they always had big wheels didn't they whereas a push chair and a can, buggy can i just got say, little wheels yes okay then we can i say we're deleting this today so as soon as we finish this live stream i am pressing the delete let's button. have a look at the live stream or one wincing well this is the live stream isn't it i meant the the, the live chat we can't, you know what i mean we can't Mr. look Duncan. at the live stream and because people are complaining about what i said about yes. dropping babies down the stairs well I'm, i was hoping they'd it's forgotten it's a joke i was hoping they'd forgotten but you've just mentioned it again ah oh dear so let's have a look at the live chat if we are still on i'm not even sure if we're still on there we go yes it looks as if we're still on a prompt exactly wait there let's go back a little bit oh i see uh, it looks like there is a conversation already taking place here all oh, right <laughs> watch what you are saying <laughs> says tomic that doesn't surprise me <laughs> watch what you're saying human touch regardless of the relationship or age is crucial human for, for our mental health yes that's very true but what i'm saying is you don't need to have you know necessarily need to have the baby th that in a papoose yes. in order for that baby to receive uh, sufficient love and affection yes because i mean i, I, I we grew up didn't we in uh, in, in, I mean, my mother used to leave me in a pram asleep. She used to cuddle me. All, I, so, or, as long as, as long as, when you grow up, you know that your mother and your parents love you, then that's sufficient. And I think you, you, you know, if your mother hold, if if your mother doesn't love you, she's not going to hold you. And it doesn't matter whether you're in a papoose or not. You, you, the important thing is that you're loved, and touch is important. But of course, you, if a mother's a loving mother she's going to do that anyway it doesn't and you don't necessarily have to yeah. carry a baby in a papoose <laughs> to, uh, to 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 prove to everybody that you are a you are a really devoted mother yeah. oh look you've only got your what's your baby doing in a pram oh what kind of what kind of horrible mother are you you're not close to your baby i don't know who says this well they said what i can imagine 
people. I should think, imagine people wearing papooses, a, 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 a sort of seeking attention well, uh, for themselves okay. as well as the baby, well, I okay, would say. OK, take, just take this all down a second, Steve. I'm, I'm just trying to break through the, the noise. People get very, very... Uh, um, I think it's a fashion statement. It's a fashion statement, I think, yes. Is there an echo in here? It's, it's very... Um, uh, yes. A fashion statement. It's how something becomes fashionable and then everyone is doing it so in the past people would have a pram or a push chair but now they they like to have their children strapped to their bodies exposed to the elements yes but some might say that that makes them a little tougher maybe stronger so it depends really mm. i mean do you remember during i remember during the late 1980s people were taking their babies to the swimming pool and they were throwing them in the water yeah good idea do you remember that what to get rid of them not to get rid oh, of them right okay because Just of to teach them to swim because <laughs> apparently <laughs> apparently babies have a natural ability to swim so if you put a baby in the water they will naturally swim so Yasmin says, really, it's very dangerous. Yes. It's got to be, hasn't it? Yes. I mean, it's got to be dangerous. I mean, we have evolved. You know, th a thousand years ago, we were carrying babies on our backs because that's the only that's the only method we had. And then somebody realised, you know, well, that's quite dangerous. There was probably a lot of deaths, people falling over, babies getting crushed. So they thought, well, let's invent something that will protect the baby called a pram yeah let's put it on you know, we've evolved beyond the papoose <laughs> yes let's put the baby on wheels where it can just go anywhere i know but it's safe it's protected from the uh, it's protected from the sun it's protected from rain it's in a nice comfortable warm environment it's got to be safer than than a than a than a papoose there's all this uh, a, a lot today people want to sort of go back to how things were done a thousand years ago and there's a reason why we don't do a lot of those things. Can I, now. Can I just say I don't want to go back to a thousand years ago. It isn't. It wasn't a very nice time to well, live. In fact, people are having paleo diets, isn't it? You keep mentioning that. What What the hell is a paleo diet? Paleo diet is a, is a diet that's a fashionable diet. Okay. Based on what we thought humans were eating in the Paleolithic era. Which was, you know, sort of, I don't know exactly when that was. Oh, okay. Tomek can look it up. Yes. Tomek. Paleolithic area. Tomek, uh, Tomek will tell us. Paleolithic uh, era, which was probably 100,000 years ago or something like that. So oh. we're basically it's grains and seeds and nuts and things like that, which, yeah, they're healthy. But you don't have to devote your whole your whole diet to that so basically there's so a reason why you know people only lived till they were about 30 in the paleolithic era we've only done one word and, and diet was a factor of that because you've got to have a you know you, you move we move on we evolve yes so you know papoose is out so it's a bit like rug is in yes it's a bit like going into your garden and just just crawling around and just eating what you find on the ground yes it's like it's like you see some gardeners for example gardeners do you Yes, they, they they don't like to use any, any any electrical equipment to cut their hedge, for example. Who? I, well, I know, I know people are like this. So uh, instead of, you know, you can cut your hedge in, in 10 minutes using using an, an electric hedge cutter. Yes. Oh, no, but so, no, we, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use a traditional manual method. So there they are chopping away for hours with the, with shears. Isn't that clipping? Yes, exactly. That's so not they, they, chopping, they, that's they clip, won't, uh, clipping. Clipping. You know, some so, people like to be like to live, which is why I've got rid of my car now, because I feel better. I've got you've got to be part of the modern world and, and move forward. All that I've done the right thing. I'm not crying anymore over the car. But, That's it. But you still have a car. I know, but it's a new one. Oh, I see. It's not mine, but it's a new one. OK, I miss the old one. But you've got to move on. You've got to move forward. You can't look back. You can't be regressive. Sorry, am I watching the live stream again? I have. I've really, really just taken off now haven't i mr duncan think we do are you okay are you, are you are you on something have they sorry have they have they legalized cannabis in this country well no, they have in canada anna, think, anna doesn't think it's dangerous i think steve is on something it probably isn't dangerous as long as you don't chip up and fall yes that's it so if you are wearing your baby on your body don't fall over or don't walk fall over. and don't walk into a wall 
So, yes, I no think No one can steal your baby either if it's strapped to you. It's more difficult, isn't it? It's very, very good advice. They could run off with your pram, but you might try to tear your baby off you. That, Sorry, that would be difficult. Who, who is taking babies away from people? I don't know. What, you mean someone will run up to them in the street and just take their baby? Well, people ha babies have been stolen out of prams. You mean baby snatching? Baby snatching. Ba ba babies have been taken from prams. This sounds like something from the 1960s. My mother used to, she used to tell me uh, that when I was growing up, in the, in the, when I was a baby in the early 1960s, she would uh, take me in the pram, just leave me outside a shop, go yeah. in, buy what she wanted, come back out, and I was still there. <laughs> I think you know, she... she <laughs> I think it's. I think it's. I, I, think, a, I oh. think it's safe to say your mother was trying to get rid of you. Yes. I think she was hoping. Oh that my goodness! Really? So she was leading me to believe that it was so safe back then. Everybody just left their babies outside shops in prams. But in fact, it was very dangerous, and she was hoping I was going to be stolen. So why are you shouting? Are you are you doing this for the neighbours? I was a very, I was a lovely baby, you know. I, I, I was very quiet. I hardly ever cried at all, apparently. I, I was the opposite. I used to sleep for hours on end. Yes. Mum used to have to wake me up to breastfeed can, me. Can I just say today, I'm not feeling the, the sense of you being quiet today. Oh, just full of energy today, talk, Mr Duncan. Talk, talk, talk. Oh, we're talking about subjects, controversial subjects. I was a noisy baby. As a baby. A noisy I, adult. Yes. OK. I was a noisy baby. I would cry all the time. And one day, apparently, my mum told me this. One day, my mum picked me up and she threw me. I'm not joking. She threw me onto the bed and she said I bounced up and down on the bed like this. I bounced because she threw me so hard. Why did she throw you? Because I was crying, crying, constantly crying. Abuse. And... She threw me onto the bed and I bounced. And, and, and all I can say is, I think that explains many things. Jeff's remembered that I want a red Mustang. Oh, OK. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Oh, do you know, every day this week, I drive Mr Duncan around the bend because I keep telling him about this Mustang I'm going to buy. And I keep looking it up on the internet and I wish write-ups and listening to the sound of that V8 engine. I, <gasps> wish, I wish you would drive around the bend. <laughs> <laughs> If you Thank drive, you by the way, by the way, if you drive someone round the bend, it means you make them crazy. You do something that makes another person feel like they are going to lose their mind because you are annoying them so much. You drive them round the bend. Have you? Well, Jeff is in California, I think, isn't he? Jeff is in the United States of Trump. Uh, have you driven a Ford Mustang? And I want to know what it's like. Because, of course, the Ford Mustang is an American car. It is. It is. Brought over to the UK in right-hand drive form now. We can buy it with the steering wheel on the right side for us driving here in the UK. I'm getting all excited. You are. You. I don't know what's wrong with you. I don't it's, either. It's like... Either. It's, either. it's like... Mum, it's like all of the energy from every <laughs> live stream that we've ever done... <laughs> is is in today's live stream it's like steve is i think he's going to explode in a minute like that guy on scanners when his head exploded thank you caradas paleolithic uh period that lasted from two and a half million years ago to ten thousand bc paleolithic uh the stone age yes <laughs> so paleolithic i don't think there is any chance of us going back to the stone age because human beings have only been around uh, in 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 the form i mean how will i charge up my iphone there's no way if you use the sun and you won't get very good wi-fi if human you human beings in their current form if you go back to the stone age there'll be nothing there will be no been around for uh, about 250,000 years who human beings oh us, us homo homo sapiens home <laughs> oh i wasn't going to say that <laughs> uh, i was going to say something else well it could be three hundred thousand years they keep changing that but we haven't been around that long yes so how how long have the homos have been around <laughs> homo sapiens have been around for two hundred fifty thousand years but somewhere between 250 and maybe 350 although they keep finding older and older evidence although religious people might disagree with you 
ah let's get into that mr duncan steady mr steve we've only got half an hour and i've got a lot of words related to babies here we are talking all about words to do with babies and for those who who have not seen the picture of mr steve there he is there is mr steve and this is what mr steve sounds like when he's upset <laughs> I think so. Yes, definitely. Don't sound like that. I never used to cry as a baby. I was a I was a lovely baby, a very contented baby. Oh. My mother used to say she used to have to wake me up. You know, babies normally cry to be fed, don't they? But my mum said to me she used to have to actually wake me up to feed me. Isn't that a song by Wham? Wake me up before you goo goo. <laughs> <laughs> baby. We all know what a baby is. It's a, a newborn infant child. Uh, it actually also refers to the baby when it's still inside the womb. Steve has a baby face. So when you, it doesn't have to, you know, it also refers to a baby animal, a small animal, but that, that, that we know. But a baby, because if you refer to like your baby brother or your baby sister, the youngest member of a family. So you've got two sisters. And uh, you would refer to your youngest sister as your baby sister. Yes. It was the youngest member of a family. Yes. Brother or sister. So no matter how old you are. No matter how old you are. You might still say, yes, that's my baby sister. Or I think also that in America they say kid sister. Yeah. Kid sister, baby sister. So even though you're uh, approaching 60, uh, no, you're not really. I'm only joking. Uh, you've got a, 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 a younger sister, your younger sister, and you still call her your baby sister. Um, the smallest of a group of things mm. is also called the baby, like baby carrots mm. or baby peas. This, if you've got a lot of carrots and they're all different sizes, the smallest ones would be the baby carrots. Baby tomatoes. Baby tomatoes, small tomatoes, exactly. Baby apples. Uh, your baby can also not refer to a, an actual baby, but it can be a project or something that's very special to ah, you. Ah, well done. Your baby. Yes, well. that's my baby, that is. You've got a special... Yeah, you know, For example, you might be restoring a car or something like that. It might be a long... It's just something that you do. It's very special to you. It's your baby, your project, your special thing. It might be at work. There might be a lot of projects going on at work. <laughs> There's always a project. <laughs> There's always projects at There's work. There's always projects. Every at, week. Every week you have a projects at work. Every week you have a project. And uh, But there might be one particular thing which means something to you and you want to do that particular project. That's your baby. That's the thing that's important to you. You're going to do that. So the thing you are taking care of, the thing you are doing that means a lot to you. Yes, and you want to take care of it just like you would a real baby. Next one. Cry baby. Ah. Cry baby, which is a, a term used to describe somebody who's older, but they cry over something. They get upset in a way that is inappropriate for their age. So, for example, you. Wow. Okay. You don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't need you to do that, whether. <laughs> I'm sure that looks funny. <laughs> uh, cry, baby. Yes. Yeah, so, if, for example, if if uh, I was to go outside and do some gardening and a thorn stuck in my finger and I came running inside crying to Mr Duncan. Uh, he would say to me, oh, you cry, baby, grow up. Don't be so stupid. It's only a little thing. Uh, or if I fell over and grazed my knee. Uh, as a child, you could cry and, and it would be fine, but as an adult, it wouldn't be. Uh, so a cry, baby, somebody who, who gets overly emotional as an adult over things which you should have grown up grown up over really infantile behavior uh, you could say um okay we've got premature baby a premature baby 
which is a baby that is born before it should be born, uh, which in terms of uh, human beings, <laughs> or also called preterm. Uh, I think they call it preterm in America, premature baby here. Uh, born before it's mature, basically before it should be born. Uh, aye. Which is, yes, all right, we'll come on to you in a minute. Uh, technically, any a baby, if it's born uh, before... Uh, 37 weeks or before is termed a preterm baby and it literally pre the, the 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 meaning of the word pre it means before post is after pre before before maturity so a baby is born before it should be which technically is 37 weeks or below and mr duncan you were a premature baby were you not i was a premature baby i was born just over two months early i was so small i was actually so tiny you could put me in your hand like that i was only very small only a little tiny baby and they had to put me inside a glass box where they would give me oxygen so i could i An could incubator i could live and grow incubator so a thing that helps a person to to survive if they are born too early so, so you were born eight weeks before you should have been yes i was very tiny and apparently my mm. my i was very dark in color because the blood wasn't going around my body in fact they thought that i i wouldn't survive it's true i'm being very serious here they actually told my parents to name me straight away just in case i didn't make it so can you believe it so so i i came into this world by by the skin of my teeth so you were 29 weeks. Yeah. Uh, because it ended 37. Uh, yes, yeah, so two. Oh, no, you were probably. No, not probably 29. Yeah, you were premature, but 40 is 40 weeks is supposed to be uh, the full gestation period. OK. Uh, apparently. Um, but that, 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 the, the, depending on how you measure it, it gets a bit complicated there. <laughs> so you were probably born <laughs> at. 32 weeks, I'm yeah. guessing. 32 well, weeks. They told my parents I would be an October baby. So I was actually due in October. Yes. But I was born at the at the beginning of August. So I was a, mm. a couple of months of, uh, early. Mm. I was very early. 32 uh, and, weeks. And, and yes. Uh, 20, yeah. I got into this world. My life, my life happened just by chance. Because if, 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 if I'd been born... A week earlier or maybe a week or two earlier I might not have survived at all yes because back in the late 1960s when you were mid mid 1960s when you were born the technology to keep a premature baby alive mm. would have been you know in its infancy probably mm. and babies don't tend to survive uh, beyond uh, if they're born before 24 weeks uh, that's the sort of cutoff point I think for a baby to survive there has been a baby apparently born at 22 weeks and survived mm. uh, but i think there's i think that's the youngest in the world 21 or 22 weeks but 24 weeks but that's now yes so i mean to be born at 32 weeks in the in, in the 1960s yes. that really was you know you were lucky to survive mr duncan yes well that's what they said they they, they actually got my parents to name me straight away and they just chose duncan so that's it. So, so the reason why I'm Duncan, that the name that, that was given to me or is given to me, <laughs> happened in, in quite a hurry. Oh, people have said, like Zena has said, we're so glad you survived. Me too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty glad as well. Quite glad. OK, another use of the word baby. OK. As, as a term of endearment. A term of inf uh, affection, uh, babe, or babes. Oh, okay. Hello, babe. Wasn't How that are a you? wasn't that a pig? Uh, yes. Yeah, so if you call somebody your babe, it's uh, you know you're probably in love with them. They're probably your sweetheart. Um, hi, babes. Love you, babes. It's a term of endearment. Term of in. I just said that. Uh, <laughs> But a, a, a sort of another word that's used a lot nowadays is, is babes. So you put an S on the word and say ah, babes. But they... they, that, they yes. Babes. Hi, babes. That's not really somebody that you're 
in a relationship with, it's sort of more like a very close friend. Babes, you know, it's a bit more flippant. Hi, babes. Not hi, babe. Hi, babe. That's somebody that you're in love with in a relationship. But yeah. babes is sort of more to a friend that you might have had a sort of a relationship with yes. in the past or but somebody that you're, you know. OK. Babes can be used as a plural, of course, to mean attractive women. So lots of attractive yes. women in one place. Babes. You can say there are lots of babes although yeah. nowadays again you have to be so careful what you say in this day and age 2018 approaching 2019 you have to be so careful so so you might say oh there are some babes over there can't say that anymore you can't say that anymore that's off the list i'm sorry you can't say that that's sexist here's another one mr duncan okay uh bush baby OK, a bush baby, which I thought was a was a, some Australian term for, for a baby born out and out in the outback. In oh, the I bush. See. So maybe a, a baby that's born literally in the but bush. It's not it's not not in the bush. It's not that at all. Yeah. A bush baby is, in fact, a small nocturnal African uh, primate. Although technically they do come. From, oh, no, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say that. So what are you going to say then? So a small, you know, those those small little woolly furry small they're not monkeys they're primates which is a, a you know a zoological term that includes monkeys apes and ourselves with what the lemurs uh, uh, is another word for them but they're these they've got these big round eyes they only come out at night they've got long tails they're very small cute look, looking uh animals that live in the forests uh, of africa and they're nocturnal uh, primates and they're called bush babies. Oh, I see. Because they live out in the forest in the bush. So they, they look a little bit like lemurs. Yes. And they have these big wide eyes I because know. they come out at night. Oh, I, I love lemurs they so much. They call them bush babies. I wish I could keep a lemur in, in the house. I really do. I, I would love to have a little lemur or a little, little baby monkey. And, and the monkey never grows up it stays small and it oh, as you walk around the little monkey will cling to you oh isn't that lovely oh, bush baby oh, what? julie g was born 28 weeks oh very similar to yourself oh okay and weighed only a kilo i did not know you that weighed a, you said you were bought you weighed two pounds yes. which is about a kilo That's so it. julie g and you were both premature babies born around the same time the same weight that's it how about this is a funny well i think it's i, I should say it's funny but I don't, it's probably not funny belarusia oh belarusia why are you in blue now suddenly is that because you've been promoted but belarusia is now a moderator is that why belarusia's name now comes up in blue writing that's it because because belarusia is in charge of the live chat so if anyone mm. if anyone is naughty belarusia can can kick them out think of the Power. You have the power. <laughs> OK. Here's another word, Mr. Duncan. Oh, what was that? Vlad says, I was born so ugly. The doctor says if this baby flies, it's because he's a he's a bat. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, uh, Vlad. See, no, I thought you were going to say I was so ugly that the, the baby slapped my face instead of my bottom. Show us a picture. I, have you grown into a beautiful adult, Vlad? We <laughs> want to know. Show us a picture. Um, the one that you've shown on your eye dent there doesn't give much away. Yes, your icon is not clear. Your icon doesn't tell us. There's no features on that icon. Abdul Faz, by the way, Abdul Faz, my grandmother used to carry me in a papoose. And I, uh, are you malformed from all the accidents? From uh, being uh, falling over and things like that with your grandmother, or are I, you a healthy baby? I bet that Al uh, Abdul Faz was was very grateful for the for the care. I think yes, so. I'm, I'm, so your grandmother used to carry her around. That's interesting. I, I'm quite fascinated by that. Hmm. <laughs> Another one, Steve. Before Another we go, one. we've only got 15 minutes. Oh, right here we go. It, uh, a crack baby. Uh, a crack baby. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, mm? Ooh. What? Just a moment. Where's Mr. Duncan going? Anyway, I... <laughs> it is a phrase, a crack baby. It means a baby born to a mother who 
has been taking crack cocaine. A crack baby, well, that is a phrase. Well, this, this live stream took quite a dramatic turn. No, if, if, a, if a mother is taking crack cocaine and we're not commenting on, on that drug abuse or anything at all, if a, if, a, if a baby is born to a mother who's taking cocaine, it's called a crack baby because it's probably, it's probably addicted to cocaine, the baby. I think it is. In fact, I think they have to give it some treatment because, of, because of, it's already born addicted. What? So yeah, that's true. So if if the baby is born to someone who's taking cocaine, they have to give the baby cocaine. Apparently, well, I don't want they give the baby. I don't suppose they give the baby cocaine. This can't be but real. The baby is uh, is is addicted in some way because its mother's been taking cocaine, so it's absorbing it into in the womb. It's true. What a, and they call them crack babies. What a strange world we live in. Yes. Well, just as if your mother drank when you were a baby, you probably you're probably born an alcoholic baby. So what they have to give beer to the baby? Yeah, whiskey. So I think so is... the baby has beer. You can't give beer to a baby. We don't. I'm only really joking. But a crack baby is a real thing. Uh, a heroin addict uh, who gets pregnant and then has a baby, and the baby is, uh, you know, addicted to cocaine. Very wow. sad. What a start! Baby like. proof. Here we go. They're from one extreme to the other. So we've gone from crack baby to baby proof. Baby proof, yes. Baby proof or child proof. It just means uh, when something is safe from um, resistant, tamper resistant, like a box of uh, tablets. Tamper resistant uh, tablets uh, container. Yes. Well, they, they just can't be opened. They can't, exactly. They can't be opened because to stop the babies getting the pills out and eating them. So maybe in a medicine container, the, yes. if you look at the top, it will just turn round. You've, you got, to, you've got to squeeze it, haven't you? You've got to squeeze it or sometimes in a certain way. press down and then you turn it and then it will open. Bottle of disinfectant, same thing. You can't, you know, if you leave a leave your baby lying around. Well, your baby could be in the kitchen, could go into the cupboards, get out some disinfectant and play, you know, get and start drinking. But they can't with the tamper-proof lids. So anything that prevents... Uh, the baby from getting into something it shouldn't do yes. is baby proof. I think the other the other one is cupboard doors in the kitchen, so you can have things in, in a on a cupboard that stop the doors opening on the cupboard, so the baby can't get inside and start eating all of your food. <laughs> Caradess says, "What about a vodka baby?" Yes, <laughs> I suppose. Well, if you can have a crack cocaine yes. baby, I'm sure you can have a vodka baby. It's very very strange subject. Here's another one. Baby boomers. Oh, a baby boomer or baby boomers. Uh, these are children. A it's a generation of people who grew up in the, after the war, after the Second World War. Oh, OK. When there was a big uh, increase in the population. So the baby boomers were people born during this sudden increase in, 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 in the number of babies born. Uh, growing up in the sort of 50s and 60s. I think so we, we, I th we're baby boomers, really. I think we know what people were doing after the Second World War. Well, a lot of people were killed. Uh, and there, were, there was a big surge in the population just after the war. And the people that grew up in the 50s and 60s were called the baby boomer generation. So I, I'm, I'm, but we are technically baby boomers, probably a little on the old side mm. for baby boomers. But, uh, no, but, uh, as I understand it, a baby boomer. If you are a baby, uh, a baby boomer. <laughs> <laughs> this might be the the strangest word to say. I when I say it, it doesn't sound right. Baby boomer. Baby it's, boomer. It sounds like exploding babies. Well, a boom in boom. something is when something increases a lot. So oh, I see. We're, t we're describing the, the 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 boom in babies, in the number of babies that appeared. In the in the years after the Second World War, so a sharp increase, a sharp increase, sharp increase is boom. Yeah, a boom in something. Yes, a boom in something. So there was a boom in babies in the fifties, for in 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 the sort of fifties and sixties, and it's people growing up, and they had uh, the generation because then after that there was a spike in p in in population, but they've had. This generation have had a, a, um, a great influence on society and culture. Um, over the, over the many decades that have passed since then, they've had a big influence on finance, culture, television, media, uh, and they're they're regarded as a very influential group of people mm. who have 
who, who decided all political policy and, and you name it because yes. all those people born in that era era went in to all the key jobs everywhere okay but of course they've been superseded now by the millennial so generation millennials are basically spoiled young people they're the children of the baby boomers yes sort of born in the sort of nine, late 1980s 1990s and this group of people are very influential mm. they're, they're trying to sort of uh gain influence over the baby boomers who are seen to influence too much policy you know the, the baby boomers want to keep everything the way it is now so that everything's they're used to this way of life uh they're quite wealthy because they've they've built up a lot of of income and equity and property and pensions and things like that so that money of course is power and influence yes and uh, this generation is seen now as a bit you know, a bit, bit old-fashioned. It's about time the next generation, the, the millennials, took over. Yeah. So the millennials, though, don't really have such a good uh, sort of feel to them. So w when we talk about when we talk about millennials, we tend to think of them as being a little spoilt. Bit they, spoilt. They, yes. They, they expect everything to come to them because they they just sit there and everything in life will come to them. Everything will will be be theirs. Uh, they don't have to work very hard for it. Whereas I think baby boomers, they they actually did have to work. Yes, so, because they were poor after the war, trying to build society back up again. So there is a, a subtle diff. Well, I don't think the babies did, did they? No, but the, the baby boomers, the, 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 when they grew the, when they grew up. That's it. And uh, the millennials were born from the baby boomers. And mm. so, of course, they grew up from relatively wealthy households, whereas the baby boomers were, were born in poor conditions. Yes. Uh, generally. That's it. Uh, yes. so, so when you say that they regarded as a bit spoiled snowflakes, uh, spend all their time on social media. That's the, mm. that's that sort of millennial generation taking their selfies on on Instagram. Oh, look at me! Aren't I young and good looking? Yes, because the, mm. they've been because of their parents uh, developing all this wealth in uh, particularly in Western. We're talking about Western society here, of course. Uh, built up all that wealth, they don't have to worry about uh, having a roof over their heads or, or where food's going to come from, whereas their their parents would have done. Um, and uh, so that makes them uh, obviously different. Of course, population now is, is dropping in many countries. It is. So in places, I think I want to say Japan. I'm sure in Japan, I don't think we have anyone watching in Japan today because Mika isn't here. So um, what I was going to say in many places, including the UK, fewer and fewer people are actually going ahead and having babies, having children. So more people now are deciding not to have children at all. So they get married, they, they have a nice house and they have a nice life, but they don't have a child. They exactly. choose They choose not to. Babysitter. This isn't somebody that sits on babies, uh, although they might do. <laughs> this is somebody who looks after your baby. Yeah for you when you want to go out for the evening or maybe you're going to work and you want to go to work you've had your baby you want to go back to work you want somebody to look after your baby but usually it's in the evening mother and father are going out for a night out somewhere it might be an anniversary uh, and they want somebody to look after the baby and usually it's a sort of older teenage girl or a young adult that will come to look after your baby for you or a relative or a friend or you might pay somebody uh, to look after your baby for the evening when you're out a babysitter yeah so a person that, a child minder so they're sitting with your baby until yes. you come back that's it a child minder would be another so i don't know for example if you're going on holiday to i don't know portugal and you decide that you want to go out you have to have somewhere to look after your baby so you can go out and have i don't know have some nice tapas or something so you say you make sure that there is a babysitter there looking after them so nothing happens yes that's good left holding the baby <laughs> if you are left that's an expression idiom would you say mr duncan it's a it's kind expression. of a, it's kind of a, an idiom to be honest Yes, that means that you're left suddenly with some responsibility that you weren't expecting. Yes. Just like if somebody just handed you a baby. Oh, what's the first reaction if somebody hands you a baby? What a responsibility because you, you can't you don't want to drop mm. the baby 
uh, you've got to look after it. But it can be used uh, to not mean literally holding a baby. It could be some important project. That's it. It's, it's an uh, idiom. That you're given at work. Somebody just says, right, you've got to handle this now. That's yours. You look after it. Suddenly you're left holding that, that important project or that task that needs to be completed. But mm. it's very valuable and it has to be handled correctly. So now they uh, are responsible for it. That's right. So it could be uh, it could be somebody's left at work. Uh, well, I, I like to use work work expression because everybody works. Oh no, that's, that's not what I'm laughing at. I was so <laughs> somebody's left at work and they were handling this this particular project or this customer, and uh, suddenly it you've got to do it because there's nobody else to do it. So you're left holding the baby. So you've got to uh, you've got to look after. Can that. I just say that Louis Mendez has just given me a very good piece of advice don't speak too much in a bad way about millennials because most of them are here watching you on the live stream oh right. ah, very good point there Louis. very good point Lewis. But, of, but of course i wasn't referring to you because you are lovely you're here so ah, you, you, you you're you're, you're you you know you're here watching and so you you have very good taste so but no they, they are the next generation that is going to take us forward yes uh, and, uh, you know, we have to have that in order to progress. I think we can squeeze one more baby out. Right. I've got one more then. <laughs> have I had that one right? So left holding the baby. So if you suddenly walked off and left me, I would have to carry on the live stream on my own. I'd be left holding the baby, yes. the baby being the live stream. So I would I would leave and Mr. Steve would have to take over. I would leave him holding the baby. OK, one more. I like this one. Oh, it's, it's, a bit it's OK. Small. People can see it's high definition. Don't worry, Steve. I know, but if they're watching on something small, they won't be able to see it. <laughs> they just have to get closer. You, uh, you can move your, your phone nearer to your face like this. Throw the baby out with the bath water. <laughs> Similar to uh, the expression don't uh, cut off your nose to spite your face okay in other words it means to discard something useful or ba or valuable while disposing of uh, something worthless uh so it's a phrase it's a warning really against thoughtless behavior move that back because it goes out of focus you see okay there you go i don't like it when you manhandle me mr duncan uh so for example if you if you were invited to a party and um and you didn't want to go because there was someone there you didn't like. Uh, you, you you might. I'm not going to go to that party, but you're sort of you're discarding something valuable, which is the invite to the party, which you might like, uh, because uh, somebody there that you you don't like particularly. It could be a, a, a project as well. Uh, <laughs> that's always a project. Another project. Uh, a project because you might scrap a project that you're working on. You might have been working on a project for a long time okay. and you scrap it. You think, oh, I can't be bothered with that anymore because of a few, a couple of little details that you can't sort out, which could have been sorted out had you not got emotionally upset about it. And you just decide to scrap the whole. The project's very important. If it came to conclusion, it would be very good. But you decide because of a couple of little small problems, you're just going to scrap it. So that's throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Yes. So it's very similar to, to cutting your nose off to spite your face. Or we can say that you throw the baby out with the bathwater. You are not just throwing the useless thing away. You are also throwing the useful thing. Yes. So, yes. It. So it's, it's a very big sacrifice that you don't need to make. We are coming up to four o'clock so that's almost it for today We're almost done i want a couple of more words let's just have a look so we have crib and cut just before we go crib and cut so this is what a baby would normally sleep in crib is often used in american english and cut is used in british english so that is what your little baby will sleep in at night all wrapped up in its blankets although not too much because you mustn't overheat a baby you must not you be very careful with that it causes a lot of cot deaths just before we, overheating just before oh dear just before we go it. a crib as it was all can also be used in another way crib it means to it means to sort of uh, if you crib something 
uh, then you're cheating, aren't you? I or, don't know. I've never heard of that. Out, cribbing. If you look over at somebody else's answers, they're, 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 you're doing a test. Oh, I see. You crib. Yes, you're looking yeah. over and you're copying. Your so you copy someone else as they're writing answers down. Yes. Talking of answers, we have the answer to today's mystery idiom, which is what I'm trying to get in very quickly because it's nearly time to go. So today's mystery idiom. There it is. Does anyone know what the answer is? Does anyone know what the answer is to the mystery idiom? Your hands are very cold, Mr. Duncan. We how do, how do you know, Steve? How do you know that my hands are cold? A bee in your bonnet. Oh, I see. Oh, I saw that what? earlier. No, we haven't revealed it yet. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Steve, for that. But no, but somebody was commenting on that earlier on. Somebody got it very early on in the live stream today. Oh, all I can say is I'm glad gun ownership isn't allowed in the UK that's all I can say I'm leaving it there that's all I'm saying be in your bonnet so Steve what does it mean then to become obsessed and preoccupied with something if you were to fuss and complain about one thing too much you might be described as having a bee in your bonnet so there you can see there is a bee and it is wearing a bonnet a bonnet which, of course is yeah another word for a hat yeah normally worn by a baby Quite yes. often we will describe a baby's hat as a bonnet. So, so you would get very excited, wouldn't you, if you had a bee trapped inside your hat yes. or your bonnet. So that describes how a person behaves when they're getting obsessed about something mm. or preoccupied or fussing about a particular subject or something. We are about to go back in time. Way back. Are we? we are about to go back in time to 2007. I'd like uh, to go back in time about 30 years. And this is <laughs> this is one of my first ever lessons that I recorded after after coming back to England from China. And so this is me 11 years ago. Don't forget, we're back next week and it is the end of October. And also we'll be celebrating my 12th year on YouTube 12 years we're having fireworks doing this don't forget also you can catch my grammar lesson on Wednesday as well so that's it thanks Steve thank you Mr Duncan and thank you to everybody I've had a, a lovely time today and I look forward to seeing you all next week you have been adequate thanks a lot thank you that's what I have to put up with thank you very much Steve and we will see you next week. OK, bye bye. Ta ta. <laughs> and that is that. That's all we have time for today. See you next Sunday, two o'clock UK time. We are now going to go back to 2007. Do you remember my first ever outside lesson? The first time I ever did anything outside after returning to England? Well, just in case you don't remember it or maybe you weren't watching my videos 11 years ago. Here it is right now. You see, today I'm trying to make a short piece uh, for my YouTube account uh, reading a story. My original plan was to go into the local town park, but I decided instead to do it here in the back garden. Hi everybody, this is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you? Today I would like to read a story to you. It's called One Good Turn. Two young men were walking along a narrow street. Each one in turn came across an old man. 
lying in the gutter. He was wearing tattered clothes and appeared cold and hungry. The first man passed by the elderly gentleman without stopping. However, the second man stopped and looked at the old man with a sympathetic gaze. He reached into his coat pocket and took out some loose change that he had in there. Here, said the young man, take this and buy yourself some hot food. Thank you very much, said the old man in a weak voice. Don't mention it, replied the young man. The young man continued to walk along the street until he came to the corner. He stopped and turned round. To his amazement, the old man had disappeared as if he'd vanished into thin air. Later that evening, the young man was sitting at home watching the television. He was watching a program about people who do good turns for others. To his amazement, he saw the old man whom he'd met earlier in the day. It turned out that the old man was in fact an actor, dressed to appear as a homeless person. He was even more shocked to see himself giving the money to the old man. It turned out that the TV station had recorded everything that had happened. A moment later, the telephone rang. The young man hesitated for a moment and then answered. It was his mother. I just saw you on television, she screamed. I'm so proud of what you did today. The young man listened to his mother's words of praise and smiled to himself. This is Mr. Duncan in England saying bye for now.